Finance Minister Mifta Smile says that Islamabad has received a memorandum of economic and financial policies from the International Monetary Fund early this morning for the 7th and 8th review. The MEFP will reportedly contain prior actions necessary for implementation before the board takes up Pakistan's case for the disbursement of the next tranche. The development comes after both sides reached an understanding on the federal budget for the incoming fiscal year, wherein Pakistan agreed to generate 436 billion more taxes and gradually increase petroleum levy up to 50 rupees per litre. As the Pakistan Muslim League Nawaz led coalition government finds itself beset by economic challenges on nearly all fronts, speculations have begun over the possible return of one of the party's key financial results. Sources told Dawn that Ishaqdar's return to Pakistan is highly likely by the third week of July, adding that Nawaz Sharif is adamant that Dar should return since the country's economic situation is hitting PMLN's credibility. Main roads for vehicular traffic remain blocked for the second consecutive day due to protests in several parts of Karachi, with residents taking to streets and burning tires over the K-Electric for carrying out unannounced and prolonged load shedding and frequent power breakdowns during the ongoing hot and humid weather. Pakistan the Hikinsaf filed a petition with the Election Commission of Pakistan challenging illegal changes made in the preliminary electoral rules and seeking their corrections as per law. The petition says due to wrong placement of preliminary electoral rolls at wrong display centers, a large number of voters has been unable to check their entries and to get them verified or to apply for correction. The Mutahida Qawmi movement Pakistan and Jamaat Islami were found in agreement over incidents of rigging during the polling for the first phase of local government elections in Sindh showing dissatisfaction over the performance of the Election Commission of Pakistan and accusing the ruling Pakistan People's Party to using its authority to influence the electoral process, violating the Code of Conduct and gerrymandering. Finance Minister Mehta Ismail says if the prices of petroleum products further hike in the global oil market, the government shall not implement petroleum development levy and sales tax at the same time. In the Mandi, the price of oil is 113 dollars. If the price of oil is 150 dollars, then what can I do with it? I don't want to do it with it, but I don't expect that it will go so much. But we have a planning of 120 and 130. हम ये जो पचासी रुपए की बात कर रहे हैं ये हमने बात नहीं करी है। पाकिस्तान और फ्रांस हैव साइन एन एक्रीमेंट फॉर द सस्पेंशन ऑफ लोन्स अमाउंटिंग टू 107 मिलियन डॉलर्स अंडर द G20 डेट सर्विस सस्पेंशन इनिशिएटिव। द इकोनॉमिक अफेयर्स डिवीजन सेज दैट द अमाउंट व्हिच वाज इनिशियली रीपेयेबल बिटवीन जुलाई एंड दिसंबर The Central Developing Working Party has cleared a total of 19 projects having an estimate cost of 142.3 billion rupees. The body approved 13 projects worth 34.83 billion rupees, while another six projects worth 107 billion rupees were recommended to the Executive Committee of Economic Council. The projects include connecting Mansera and Khabib Pakhtunkhwa to Muzaffarabad in Azad Jammu and Kashmir, as well as 11 bridges and two tunnels on Jhelum and Kunar. In a bid to produce cheap electricity to provide relief to domestic consumers and industries, Prime Minister Shahbaz Sharif has directed authorities to import high-quality coal from Afghanistan in rupees instead of dollars to save the country's precious foreign exchange. He also ordered improvement in transportation of coal, directing Railways Ministry to take all necessary steps to ensure prompt delivery of import coal to power plants. While finalizing an unprecedented 7 rupees and 90 pesos per unit additional fuel cost adjustment for distribution companies for next month, the National Electric Power Regulatory Authority has noted that Pakistan was left with no choice but to face low trading or generate electricity using expensive fuel oil. The higher electricity rates would be charged to all consumers in the coming billing month except to those using fewer than 50 units per month. This tariff is not applicable to K-Electric consumers directly 
although a part of it subsequently becomes part of Kay Electric's tariff adjustments on account of its import from the national grid. Former Vice President of the All Pakistan Paper Merchants Association, Abid Nisar, says printing of textbooks appears impossible due to the massive increase of up to 200% in paper prices and profiteering by local paper mills. The government has imposed a 70% duty on imported paper, which is used to print books and other printed materials. Imported paper is subject to a 20% import duty, followed by a 17.5% sales tax, a 20% customs tax, a 29% anti-dumping duty and a 6% additional duty according to the federal budget for the next fiscal year. The total profits and dividend outflows increased to $1.6 billion during the 11 months of the current fiscal year, reflecting that foreign investment in Pakistan yields good profits despite political and economic uncertainties. The latest data issued by State Bank of Pakistan shows the high economic growth of about 5.87% in outgoing fiscal year provided good profits to foreign investors. Prime Minister Shahbaz Sharif reconstituted the 18-member Economic Advisory Council to review the prevailing economic conditions and propose stabilization measures and corrective actions within the available resources. This replaces the 22-member committee the Premier had constituted on April 29th that also included members from the coalition partners and some leading businessmen who have now come under high corporate taxes in the latest budget update and were critical of taxation measures. The coalition partners and business tycoons have now been exed from the committee. Citing growing convergence among NATO and G7 members about the challenge China poses, United States National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan says US President Joe Biden and Chinese President Xi Jinping are expected to speak in the next few weeks. The group of seven rich democracies will address China's non-market economic practices its approach to debt and its human rights actions in a communique today, while a NATO strategic concept to be released later this week would address China in ways that are unprecedented. Firefighters and soldiers searched on Tuesday for survivors in the rubble of a shopping mall in central Ukraine after a Russian missile strike killed at least 16 people in an attack condemned by the United Nations and the West. Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky said more than a thousand people were inside when two Russian missiles slammed into the mall, claiming that it was not an accidental hit but a calculated Russian strike exactly onto this shopping center. Conservative judges of the United States Supreme Court have reinterpreted a constitutional amendment that prevents government officials from publicly displaying their faith at the workplace. At issue was whether a public school employee praying alone but in view of students was a violation of the First Amendment of the U.S. Constitution, which forbids a government and its employees from, from publicly displaying their religious preferences. First Amendment Establishment Clause prohibits the government from making any law respecting an establishment of religion. Delhi police has arrested Muslim co-founder of a fact-checking website after accusing him of insulting religious beliefs on Twitter. Muhammad Zubair, who co-founded Alt News and regularly tweets and regularly tweets on the rising marginalization of the Muslims in the country, was arrested under two sections of a law related to maintaining religious harmony. A network of digital media organizations condemned the move, terming it an attempt to harass Zubair for his journalism.